Yeah. You're on. There's no way behind you. You're more like. Okay, so we're going to talk a, a little bit about an existential issue yes. from the point of view of physics. Um, and, um, and that's life before Earth and why a title would be like that. <laughs> so, um, so life is uh, uh, patterns of information that uh, uh, are usually defined as happening in biochemistry. Um, and so here's a, a pet image of, of a brain of, in different states of, of consciousness, including death, where there's nothing happening. But the, the data arrangement and the physical matter and the connectome and the genome and the biochemistry and all that stuff is almost identical between this and this. And so just having the connectome and the genetic uh, code and, and even the state of the biochemistry isn't sufficient to be alive or conscious. And so there's something that transitions between life and not life um, that is uh, more than just the structure of matter that's there. Uh, and, and we've heard um, in previous singularity things about programming and biology where basically biology is information uh, and information can be reprogrammed in biology information is encoded in DNA or base code in computers it's two base code in either case it's uh, uh, can represent more abstract information um, and in either case these are parallel systems that can be Coded. So that activity in the living thing is, is arising from programming that's, that's either in the biochemical code in, in DNA or in the uh, binary code. And so the question comes up, well, where did life come from anyway? If life is information, if life we define it as biochemistry and water, um, there's the uh, question is, well, where did it start? And the default assumption is, well, it must have started on Earth because this is the center of the universe and <laughs> humans are the most important thing. Uh, and there's no way it could have started anywhere else. But there's a, a, some interesting uh, uh, theory and papers that have, have come along that would suggest that life uh, um, uh, unlikely started here. And just to the most basic of which is the elements of life are, are carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and so forth, and none of those elements um, could have been formed by this sun. Um, they're too heavy. And so they must have been formed somewhere else and arrived here to the solar system from somewhere else and to this planet from somewhere else. And so if the components of life um, didn't start here and arrived here from somewhere else, well, why is it that we would think that life couldn't have arrived here from someone else, some, somewhere else? So uh, an interesting paper uh, from 2013 in, in Physics Letters um, uh, was done that, that uh, basically plotted the, uh, the proxy of complexity of different forms of life over time uh, on Earth. So prokaryotes are single cell um, uh, life forms, eukaryotes are cells within a cell, and then more complex life like plants and worms and uh, vertebrates and mammals and so forth are going up this curve in terms of complexity. And the fossil record is sort of the emergence of those uh, three billion years or two billion years or one billion years ago. And so our favorite exponential um, graphs, uh, a logarithmic graph, if you just plot the increasing complexity of life over time and then just draw a straight line through it and consider, well, where did that uh, complexity originate when it was zero, basically. And it's very clearly close to 10 billion years ago, while Earth is only four and a half billion years old. <laughs> so either life started on Earth, got really complicated really fast, and then slowed down in its complexity, or um, life came from somewhere else. Um, and this is sort of feels like common sense. Um, and also, if life were starting on Earth, um, uh, four billion years ago, why do we not see it starting from scratch on Earth today? Uh, are the conditions that much different? So a, a number of things point to life um, most likely didn't start on this planet and most likely started 9 to 13 billion years ago somewhere else and arrived here along with the elements of life uh, by transport mechanisms like asteroids 
or comments, um, and uh, diversified into six families of life. And there are six different kinds of styles of life, from fungi and bacteria and vertebrates and so forth. And so it would even suggest that different seeds of life arrived here at different times and have, have made up the complex ecosystem that we find now. Uh, another uh, fact that's useful is that um, deep inside the earth, if you drill down up to two or three miles down, there are uh, uh, microbes that are living there that uh, um, have, have been there obviously a long time because they, they can't move laterally. They had to have gotten there somehow. And a very interesting extra fact to this is if you drill down on this side of the earth, you find microbes with a certain genetic sequence. And if you go to the other side of the earth, drill down, you find microbes with the same genetic sequences on the other side of the earth, three miles underground. And so they, they couldn't easily have been moving around. Um, and that would suggest that they arrived fully formed as a complex life form uh, close to the time that the earth was, the continents were moving around and the earth was structuring. And so where could this have come from? And where are we? Um, and so here's Earth, and this little yellow triangle is the, the search area of the T Kepler uh, uh, telescope, which is looking for planets that we might be headed towards. And uh, the, this matter that is the components of life most likely came from the dust that created this solar system. And uh, what's thought to be at the center of most um, uh, um, galaxies is uh, um, black holes, which are a physics term for singularities. And the, uh, um, and the, the black hole is the attractor that pulls the dust together, and then as the dust is, is coalesced, the gravity turns it into uh, stars and planets, uh, of which there are many here. So where did that matter come from? And the, the current theory is, is the Big Bang theory in that uh, from nothing, which doesn't make much sense, came everything, um, which doesn't make much sense. Um, but that, that's what the observations tell us. So that about uh, three and a half billion years ago, uh, there was an event that uh, was nothing turning to energy, turning to matter. And this matter has, has uh, evolved in complexity and structure over uh, 13 billion years. Um, and a, a place to consider, well, what is a, a black hole and what is a Big Bang? And a black hole as observed by us might be a Big Bang for somebody else. And we might be inside somebody else's black hole. And the argument in cosmology is whether information could flow through black holes or not. Like if I threw a clock in a black hole, would it remember the time as it came out the other side? And even Stephen Hawking has swapped his mind a couple times about that topic. Um, and so how might this relate to life and the structure of life um, being slightly different than the matter it's made of and that and and having emerged more than four billion years ago. Um, so at the Big Bang, there was energy converted to matter, unstructured matter con converted to increasingly structured matter. And uh, it's quite possible that um, life is just a, a different structure of matter that is slightly more energetic than the components that it's made up of. So once a person dies, for example, the elements are still there, the proteins are still there, the DNA is still there, the cell membranes are still there. Their gut microbiome is likely still alive, but they're considered dead. Um, and the current standard is, is they're not, uh, they're brain dead. And, and so the elements of, of life and death are in this complicated scale. And there's a guy, Max Tegmark, a physicist at MIT, who has a, a theory about life being a different phase state of matter or a different organization of matter where there's, of course, solids, liquids, gases, and states like plasma, but that life is just a higher order state of matter and then consciousness is a higher order state of that. And so that this kind of uh, states can, can have e evolved without a planet, before planets, and going into the complexity, and then death is simply dropping back 
into the physical matter of, of our bio, biochemistry, but death. And before death, we're losing consciousness. And so these are sort of the medical definitions of consciousness, where the first is dead, uh, which is no consciousness. And then from anesthesiology, there's like, how arousable is the patient? Like, can you cut them open and do they, you know, ouch or not? That, so that's alive, but not very conscious. And then responsive is they yell, ouch. Um, and then uh, comprehension is, are they alive enough that they can understand what's going on? But in a, even in the medical definition, consciousness requires, um, are you conscious and do you have a community? Are you actually conscious enough to have relationship with, uh, with other people? And if not, you're considered a substandard of conscious. Um, so that's where I'll stop. <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with the studies where they use fMRI to communicate with patients who are like locked in? Yeah, they, yes. Yeah. So would that fall on like they lack the community even though they would meet the other? Well, so they might be arousable, they might be, they're not really arousable physically, no. but they might be responsive. Right. And, and so it used to be that death was defined as, as uh, somebody stopped breathing. And then uh, later it was defined as, is their heart stopped? Um, and only in the last 100 years has it been defined as, is their brain stopped functioning? Like clearly the microbiomes are alive and kicking in what we would define today as a brain dead person. And clearly we can keep the body of a brain dead person alive for a long time uh, through technology. And the definition of death may change with these locked in syndromes a little bit that well, how brain dead do you have to be to be really dead? Um, so. What research would you like to see pursued more in this field? Um, well, so this general area is, is, is complexity theory arising from physics. So it's theory. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Cool. Very nice. Are there any discontinuities on Earth, such as meteor hits or you know, all of the atmosphere disappearing at some point that might explain the speeding up and slowing down of evolution? Yeah, well, there's been five mass extinctions on Earth um, uh, that we have obvious evidence of. We're maybe in a sixth one now. Uh, the guesses are Mars had a mass extinction that was terminal, um, and, and, but it had oceans at one time, there's evidence of. And so both these plants are getting hit by asteroids and comet. Asteroids come from inside the solar system, comets come from outside, and they're both being hit all the time. And those uh, comets can be carrying water, that's how the water got here, it's oxygen, and they can be carrying uh, uh, elements that are the element building blocks of life. And so whether they were pre-assembled somewhere before or, or magically assembled here, um, it, either way, they came from somewhere else. Um, sorry, I guess my question is, is could those discontinuities possibly, and those mass extinctions possibly explain if life had formed here four and a half or six billion? Well, years yes. Ago? So I, I should say and that this, like this that. Life Before Earth paper mm -hmm. and physics letters is very controversial, mm -hmm. and people are trying to attack it, and generally uh, they're in the camp of creationists and then a variant of creationists, which creation happened on this planet. Um, and the, uh, and the, they say, well, the data of the complexity of life is cherry-picked, and plants have more complex DNA than humans, and, uh, and so on. But in general, it's a general theory. And so one of the main arguments is that there was some disruption, as you're saying, as the Earth was molten and forming, that the chemistry and the physics were different, and somehow uh, complexity arose out of simplicity really rapidly, but then it slowed down. And so why would it slow down? Um, and, and we're here studying exponential growth and complexity um, the, the, uh, that even date matter that is in the form of information is getting increasingly complex on an exponential scale naturally. With no human, no human is saying, well, we're gonna make it twice as good next year uh, over 100 years. And so that, that just, Increasing complexity of things may be a natural phenomenon, phenomena, whether it's biochemistry or binary. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah thanks. Is the, um, the 
is what you talked about, about life being a higher order form of matter. Is this the same as I recently read a theory where a guy was saying that um, life is formed in order to better dissipate energy? I don't quite understand it. <laughs> well, so, so a lot of uh, theorists and physicists and biologists over there come around and, and we ask what... Sorry. Yeah. One quick thing. Fireside chat is at 7.15, not 7.30, with yeah. the saliva. What, what are the... Um, uh, what is the, the basic, most simple definition of life? And it's more or less the opposite of entropy, mm -hmm. where entropy would be uh, physics dissolving into uh, lack of structure, um, and that there's something about life that resists that and keeps us together. Um, and when our life stops, we dissolve. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, last night, the conversation went around to, well, probably the second law of thermodynamics might be wrong. Um, and in that, that, which is what ent entropy is. And so there's something about life that is keeping us together, and when the life force goes, we lose that ability to keep it together. Um, so that's, that's how it relates to entropy. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Kelly has also talked about this, about uh, the technium uh, idea about the technium being more a force that kind of such as gravity that it's something that creates more and more complex structures and that is the technology and life is part of the technium as a movement of sort of <clears throat> making more and more complicated structures yeah and, uh, I, I very much agree with kevin kelly and, yeah. and his technium concept and, and his it's basically that complexity is evolving and it doesn't matter whether it's binary or biochemical it's the same right. thing yeah. and it's a mix of things um we even do a uh a meetup called Consciousness in the Cloud, and that how is consciousness in the cloud evolving, uh, which is a function of complexity. Mm -hmm. Where is that meetup? Uh, it's on meetups. It, it's usually at Netflix. Like here? It's usually at Netflix know. here in Silicon Valley. Also, just to follow up on what he mentioned in the presentation, Max Tegmark's paper, Consciousness as a State of Matter, and his book, Our Mathematical Universe, are both mm. nice reads. Yeah. yeah what true. was that name of? Ma yeah. Max, Max Tegmark. Max Tegmark. He's a... Uh, He's a physicist at MIT. Um. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, my suggestion is that we ask to continue this conversation as the uh, the fireside chat, mm. because we've had Salim a lot already, and I find this tremendously interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, I would like to have you read, and I don't know what you guys in this room say. <laughs> oh. To take that stage to get yeah. what do you think about life? It's small green it's... man all the way down. <laughs> yeah, so Salim and I agree on most things, but not everything. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys, you guys should discuss do the it. things you disagree yes, on as the fireside we, chat. We could continue over this. Yeah, well, well I'll talk with Salim about that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I'll say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.